All right, guys, welcome back to Think Football. All right, so we have been spoiled. It's been an incredible, incredible day, and we have experienced everything this World Cup. What an incredible final. And oh my God, man, I cannot believe what I've just witnessed. Um, nobody could predict this. No. Certainly nobody expected this. No. And we have witnessed great, greatness. We have witnessed Lionel Messi guide Argentina through to the World Cup. That missing piece of puzzle left in his trophy cabinet to officially complete football. And it has now been completed. And it's been incredible. It was nuts, man. Look I, at us. We absolutely look like shit here uh, because we are running on three hours of sleep. Yeah, five, five hours sleep between the two of us. We yeah. are, we're, we're shot, but it's worth it. I'll it's do it a million times it. over again. What an incredible final, Mate. man. We have literally been spoiled. Nobody predicted this. Nobody no. expected this. No, no way. And sitting there watching the final and I'm like... 70 minutes in and yeah. i'm like it's been such an incredible world cup and please god please do not let this final disappoint us do not let this final ruin the whole world cup have this one-sided game where argentina was just dominating the entire game yeah. and then up comes this 23 year old magician the guy's, a, guys are freak, absolute man. freak he goes in hard gets a pen Otamendi had a stinker yet again and Again, the second goal that he scored to level up the game, 2-2 two, two going into extra time. And you said it. You said it so many times in the past two videos that you wanted one extra time goal. Bruv, you got two in the final. Yeah. It was... It was the... Uh, mate, the game was nuts. It was wild. As you said, <laughs> 70 minutes in, where everyone's sitting there watching it. It's 3.30 in the morning, Australia time. <laughs> everyone's like, buddy Messi. Argentina's dominated. Yeah. They're up 2-0. Mate, Di Maria... The guy's, a, the guy's a freak. The guy has been injured. Oh, my God, Let's yeah. say pretty much the whole yes. tournament. He's had stop-start season with Juve with injury, suspension. He's The the coach has taken a risk by starting him. Big risk. Mate, he repaid him 10 times over. Incredible. 62 minutes or something got substituted. He absolutely carved up. Conde. Conde, my God. Yeah. He, he is so, <laughs> so, 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 I've never seen it someone so play so bad, bad in a like, final. Conde played yeah. 120 minutes of absolute dog shit, bro. Yeah. And I cannot believe he was still there. And I was sitting there, and we had, <laughs> we had mates over. And I'm like, there's no way Di De- Maria starts. You know, he wasn't great. He didn't have an impact last game when he came off the yeah. bench for a couple of minutes. And I cannot believe he started. But the fact that he missed the 2014 grand final due to injury, he was crying like every single yeah. time the camera panted yeah, Di Maria, yeah, he was today, crying. Yeah. When the first goal went in. that goal and he was crying. Yeah. On the bench, he was crying. Yeah. Hands, bro, I put my hands up and I apologize. And I'm like, bro, he, this guy needs to get his flowers because this is not the only time he's delivered nah, in the final. And I said it, I said it before yes. um, or during the tournament that for me, he's one of my two or three most underrated players mm, of all time, yeah. especially at international level. 100%. Um, what he did today... Um, yeah, Messi and Mbappe will be the two that everyone talks about, like as an individual player point of view. Yeah. But without what Di Maria did, they don't win that game. Simple 100%. as that, black and yeah. white. Coming off injury, and as I said, like he hasn't been in the greatest form, all that sort of stuff. To mm-hmm. do what he did in that first 65 minutes, mm-hmm. nuts. Man. In the, in the mentality nuts. Thing, in the mentality side of things as well, right? So Passion, man. It's just absolute passion from the Argentinians. And obviously, they have the fans there as well, which is like literally their 12th man. Yeah. And it was just unbelievable. So let's talk about France for a second, right? So yeah. the first 70 minutes of France. <laughs> and I'm like, this has been the most terrible a yeah. team has ever played in a final. Um, since yeah, I was yeah, alive but no, it, was, yeah. it was absolutely terrible and the balls on the champs to fucking take off Giroud and take off um, but, Dembele okay so f- obviously my, well, my understanding of the reasoning with that was well Dylan Dembele was playing absolutely horrible horrible so yeah. he was he was like he's had a great tournament so far he was playing absolutely horrible the Giroud thing I think was to get more pace up front and, and to press mm. but not to wait until half time to do it in like the 38th or the 40th yeah. minute. You saw Jude's reaction when he went off. He's furious. Grabbed the water bottle or the power and just absolutely pegged it. Got floor. a yellow card as well while on the bench. He, he later was just, on, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he was just losing it. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, like I don't mind seeing that if I'm a French fan mm. because that shows passion for your country, right? Like you are, yeah. you are wanting to be out there yeah. even if it wasn't your game or your sort of game. Um, and at the end of the day, if... Well, for me, he's, he's, um, the substitutions were warranted. Mm. Like you could see the, the impact in the second half later on, those fresh legs, yeah, the yeah. younger legs and fresher legs. Well, mm. not younger than Dembele, but 
in that second half where they sort of came over the top of Argentina in that last mm-hmm. 20 minutes, obviously, once they got that second goal. But that's ballsy, man. Yeah, man. Jude had, had a knock to his knee as well. I think he was, you know, in mm. doubts to start the game as well. There was a virus going. Rabio was off it. Dembele was off it. Yeah. Giroud was off it. Um, you know, there are not many people that were performing, man. They were, it oh, was, for France, yeah. it was... That first 70 minutes was Di Maria and De Paul. Yeah. De Paul, nah, not De Paul. Man, he's good. Messi, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. but Messi. yeah, but Messi's always like that. So let's, like, let's give Messi. All yeah, right, so okay, yeah, yeah. We, we, we go. All right, like let's give Messi his flowers. Like he was extraordinary. Like 120 minutes, he delivered yeah. for Argentina. Uh, De Paul was an absolute grub. But yeah, yeah like no, I'm not talking about like Argentina, like as a whole, because Argentina as a whole had a brilliant performance, yeah. right? Like it was just France that were just way off in the first grub. 70 minutes. Yeah, he's a grub. It was yeah, he's a proper mate, grub. Yeah. That kid, yeah. man. Yeah. I because hate him so much. Camera, dude, mate. What do you say? Yeah, mate, <laughs> we were sitting there going, mate. Simeone will be sitting at home watching this game. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, terrible performance in the first 70 minutes. And, yeah. and all, I was sitting there and I was like, they just need one whiff. And then if they've got that penalty, an absolute terrible penalty. First of all, let's talk about the first penalty that Argentina got. Do you reckon that was a penalty? That I don't was think it was. soft, man. They showed the replay and I'm like, oh, this will just go to VAR and they'll have a real good look at it. And they nah, just awarded they it. Didn't. And I was like, this the, is Jim Marie shady, cut bro. in front of him and I don't I, I didn't see contact yeah and, Honestly, and the I fact didn't. that it was Dembele like I think that's what sealed it for the ref because like Dembele is sort of a lazy defender like Whoa. just stuck his leg out but if you just but that had to go to VAR such yeah, a massive call in a grand final yeah. it has to go to VAR yeah. but that was a very soft pen for me but obviously the going going forward to the Mbappe pen that was a clear pen Altamendi just yeah. clearly clearly outpaced out muscles he had to bring him down um, and obviously yeah uh, Kylian Mbappe showed up 80th and then the 81st minute. Yeah. The the um the the volley that he took oh yeah the first time you look at it again, Emmy Martinez gets a good strong hand to it, mm. but th- how quick he took it and obviously the reaction time to the goalkeeper. Mm. The guy's a freak, man. It's, Far it's out. unreal, bro. The like guy, he's twenty three years of age. He man. turns twenty four tomorrow. He like at at twenty three he could have been a two-time winner of a World Cup. Yeah. Not just a two-time winner, a starter and your star player. Mm. You know, like, mm. man, the guy's got levels to go to. The yeah. guy's going to play, let's say, minimum two World Cups, injury-free, I think, possibly yeah. three World Cups. The no, guy's, I wouldn't say three World Cups because he's like, what, 24, like right now? 27, he'll be, 31, he'll be 35. Yeah, but like the position that he plays. But yeah, I mean, like what longevity to him? What let's longevity say, let's say to two him, World yeah. Cups. The Whatever, guy's yeah. a six... Highest yeah. World Cup goal yeah. scorer. <laughs> He's 23. It's a joke, man. It's, like, it's, it's terrible, The guy's man. a freak. Um, it's crazy, yeah. He was, like, he ignited that game. Mm. So, obviously, we talk about it 70 minutes into the game. It's all Argentina. Mm. They're, they're, they're running the show. Varane looked like a park defender. Mm. Yeah. He, like... He, he looked very, very, very poor. I mean, the whole um, back line looked very shaky, man. Yeah. Theo Hernandez, but Kunde, what is, like... What does is, what is, uh, Pavard have to do to get on the pitch? Like, how bad did Kunde play? And Pavard is sitting there. Mm. Okay, he, there may be something we don't know, but mm-hmm. how does he not get on the pitch? I don't know. I, I don't know. honestly don't know. Like, like, I mean, he was the key starter for them back in the 2018 World Cup. But um, uh, an- another person that changed the game for me was Kingsley Coleman as well. Came, came oh, on, just destroyed the right-hand side of the pitch. Fuck. Incredible, man. He, like He came on and... You know, I mean, he's always been that sort of player. Him and uh, Taliso used to be that sort of player that would always yeah. come on in the 60th, 70th minute, bit of pace, bit of strength and could take the game to him. Mm. But it was quality. Like, mm. it was every single time he got the ball, he was making things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very dangerous. And... Uh, yeah, like, created so many chances. Yeah, I mean, 100%. I was just saying that, you know, there were a couple of chances that were like balls inside the box, um, you know, from the from the fullbacks or from the wingers. And I was just sitting there and I was like, if Jude was like at the end of any of those, I think Jude would have got yeah. like, at least a brace this but game. Then, but then you saw later on in the game that Argentina is a very short team. Mm, yeah. So like even Otamendi, he's short. R- I think Romero defenders. is the only one that sort of... Yeah, you but Romero yeah, is not even that tall. Yeah, for, yeah. For, for, as you said. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Um, like you could see later on in the game when that last 20 minutes of normal time when France were bombing forward mm. you could see when the balls were coming in the box obviously like more and more yeah. they were getting over the top but it was just the timing of the jumping yeah, yeah. Um, the execution of the header that, that yeah. let them down whereas you know I mean we've said it before about Giroud in the videos and in the past that you sort of give him that sniff yeah, he'll and, take and he it. can take a chance he's a very very good technical yeah. player that he can sort of uh, score a score a flick or a header or something like that that a lot of players 
won't won't score. Mm-hmm. But look, we're talking about all these guys. My man, McAllister. I was going to say. I was going to say. Guy, I was sitting there and I, I was like, I, was I felt like a, like a, like a, a proud family member. Yeah. Like, I love seeing a ginger <laughs> performing on the world stage. McAllister plays for Brighton. Man, man. he, and, and, he was just a ran man's that man. midfield. I, I, bro, everyone's talking about Enzo Fernandez, but McAllister, that game. Yeah. Bro, I think everyone talks about Getting the ball from like the defense, driving yeah. up to the midfield, creating those passages of play, creating those little short runs. Uh, spaces for other players around the him. The ball for Di Maria he, to score off. Just incredible, perfectly man. Incredible, and incredible. He was, I, I was like so proud watching him play. I don't know why. I was <laughs> like, at the start of the tournament, I said he needed to start. Yeah. And I caught yeah. a bit of stick from one man in particular. Um, <laughs> not you. Um, who said, no, you're joking, blah, blah, blah. Have you seen their team? I'm like, yeah. he's a good player. Yeah. I didn't know this is what he was going to do in this World Cup. Yeah. Like, stretching match. Exceeded the, expectations, but my, man. my God, man. The guy was so good. Incredible. Like, Incredible and mate, like he's the link up obviously with Di Maria for that goal. Mm. They'll talk about the messy little flick on the outside of the foot. Okay, fair yeah. enough. I think everyone talks about Enzo uh, Fernandez because he's so young, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, playing for Benfica, not really known. Mm. Like I'm not saying that McAllister's this a, is his a, breakout tournament, yeah, though. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, um, like he ended up getting golden ball. Yeah, um, for under. It has to be under 22 yeah, or under 21. Like that, yeah. Because Mbappe's 23. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, you know what I mean? Normally it's under 23 or under 21, right? But, um, like, McAllister was immense. Brighton now has a World Cup winner in the squad. Like, there, yeah. were, there were so many memes that, like, you know, they were like, <laughs> McAllister walking in the Brighton dressing room and it's just, like, garbage all around him and him just in a golden suit just walking <laughs> in. And I was like, man, that's amazing, bro. Like, speaking of golden yeah. suits. What was Messi's outfit that he had to wear when he had to lift the trophy? Nah, that was it was a very nice thing. I mean, oh, by the way, like I think Gary Lineker and stuff made such a massive deal about that because I think in the in their culture, like you know, when you get that robe and stuff, you know how the shakes wear those massive robes. Yeah, yeah. It's like an um, it's like a robe of honor. Like it's an it's a very like it's oh, yeah, I'm, you're assu- I'm assuming present. that's yeah, what yeah. it was. Like, but the thing was like Messi was very happy to wear it, and he was very uh, like, look, he didn't care. Like he, I think he was happy to I, wear it. You could see. Messi was like a, a seventeen year old kid with yeah, a smile on his face when relieved. he walked past and he kissed. The trophy before he got to lift it, yeah, mate. The crowd erupted. Yeah. He just walked past, and he's yeah. just got this like smile on his face that I look, get goosebumps right now talking I'm, I'm about exactly it. Man. The same, man. 100%. But that's the thing. Ooh, great. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm 100 um, on the same. Like <laughs> it was, it was, man. It was, it was very wholesome. Yeah, it was wholesome. It was very, very the wholesome. most coldest photo was like him holding the golden ball, him ho- kissing the World Cup trophy. Yeah, man. bro. That that photo just is in my mind ingrained. And to be honest, man, like. Like he deserves this, man. Like he has carried Argentina. Like yeah, people talk about like yeah. you know four penalties out of the six goals that he scored, but still, man. Like his performances have been. Yeah, immense. but the thing is, it, like it's his general play yeah, in general yeah. has been top quality throughout the whole yeah. tournament. Yeah, you've got to put those penalties away and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. yeah, it's easier to score a penalty than all that sort of stuff. But look at what Kane did when he had yeah. the, the game on the line. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, and the penalty that he missed earlier in the tournament, Chesney, mate, was a. Save like yeah, yeah. that not many other keepers yeah. are going to make, but he was immense from start mm. to finish in this World Cup. Like they lost this, they lost to Saudi Arabia earlier in the yeah, tournament, yeah. and I've seen it happen before where you lose an early game and it Would can go missing. one or two ways. Yeah. They could have lost the next one and bombed out. Yeah, coach gets sacked. Uh, Messi is never as good as this yeah. man behind us. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Or you can come out and do what you did, mm. mate. They went from strength to strength to strength to strength. Every game yeah. got better. And, and it's just the thing with the Argentinians, right? Like, for them, the World Cup is so big. For them, it's like the constant battle between Maradona and Messi. Yeah. And then Maradona's a god and Messi's yeah. just like one step yeah. below him. And then now that he's achieved his feet, oh, yeah. they're both gods, man. And it's just so amazing to watch, honestly. Like, it was so beautiful was, to watch. <laughs> it was... With like the, the generational talents, right? So, the, the Messi and ne- uh, Neymar, um, <laughs> Mbappe, like, just... It was pretty surreal watching it, as I said. So, we spoke about Messi with the, the robe thing on. Yeah. Like, king of Qatar, right? Yeah. And Mbappe is there. Mate, the French president was in the crowd, mm. then was obviously down on, on the ground after the game. Yeah. And, mate, he's talking to Mbappe, and I'm thinking to myself, Mbappe's taking over PSG. Mate, France is next for this guy, mate. Like, he's, <laughs> he's thinking, I'm going to take your job. Like, yeah. it was... But it was, it was an absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable mm, game. 100%. Like you, as it's like you cannot ask for anything more as an Argentinian fan, a French fan, mm. a neutral. Um, man, I know so many people that mm. don't watch soccer, mm. woke up or football, woke up this morning, watched it, and they're messaging me going, man, this is nuts. Like, this is yeah. wild. Like, yeah. And so many and of them, me, like, like, yeah. It makes me so happy. It is. Like, it is, after, yeah. after crap you see... Um, 
like with what happened in Australia on the weekend with what, yeah. what that does to football. Yeah. What this does to mm. football on a world stage. Just unites everyone. We've had our man. issues and, we've, and it's not going to go away. And we've spoken about it before about the human rights issues and everything yeah, yeah. behind the scenes and the corruption and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But as a footballing point of view, mm. crazy World Cup. We the spoke best. about the evenness of it the and the upsets and all that. But to produce a final like mm. these two teams did today, these, you know, to say, you know, 32 guys that got on the pitch. Yeah. Absolutely not. I'm so happy, man. I'm super grateful that I was yeah. alive to watch the 120 minutes yeah. of absolute chaos that we watched. Yeah. But, man, like, what else can you say? I'm just honestly very sad that the fact that this is going to be the last, you know, World Cup that we're going to, you know, World Cup game that we're going to see. Um, as I was talking to you off camera, we we're going to go back to seeing, you know, Brighton versus Wolves on, on a Monday morning. Yeah, but think about it. I just thought about that. <laughs> Brighton versus Wolves. We're going to see McAllister play. <laughs> but, but, yeah, like, it's a big, it's a big difference, man. We've had. Um, in Australia, you know, we've had the early games and that sort of stuff, and we've had mm. six AM games, which suits our time zone a little bit better. Yeah, but just like the upsets, um, the tighter stadiums, we spoke about earlier in the in the podcast, like a few episodes ago, about the benches, mm-hmm. like charging on the yeah, field all the yeah. time, and like just the like, man, it's been nuts. It's, it's been, been wild, amazing. man. But yeah, I mean, that's all for this video, guys. That was a review for the final. It's been amazing. Thank you guys for following us on this journey. Make sure you click subscribe because we're going to have a lot of content coming towards your way because we've got the the Premier League coming in. So we're going to have Premier League reviews every single week, you know, potentially a couple of videos, potentially a couple of guests as well. So make sure you subscribe, like the video and stay safe. Thanks, guys.